Dalton's law of partial pressures is about mixtures of gases, and the idea that if each of those gases had been separate in the same container, the total pressure of the mixture is the sum of all the pressures that each gas would have exerted had they been separate. The classic question is calculating the total pressure of a mixture when you're given the pressure of each of the components. What I mean is that the total pressure is the pressure of gas number one plus the pressure of gas number two plus the pressure of gas number three plus the pressure of gas number four. Now, you can have as many gases in this list or as few as you want, but the total is the sum of each separately. One atmosphere of helium and three of neon and five of hexane and 0 0.7 of uranium hexafluoride, it doesn't matter what they are, gives you the total pressure of the mixture of those four things. Now, so this is 8.7 atmospheres. Because we're adding and there's no decimal places here, if you're going to use sig figs, you're going to have to say 7 atm, but that's neither here nor there. The classic application of Dalton's law is when you're collecting gas over water. What we mean is that if there's a chemical reaction that's creating gas here and you bubble it through a tube into water, the gas itself is going to collect here and displace the water, like push the level of water down. But what's up here is the gas that you're actually collecting and in addition, a little bit of water because liquid water has a vapor pressure and some of those water molecules are going to have evaporated into the gas phase. So the actual pressure of the gas you're collecting is never the same as the ambient pressure. Now, we're gonna say this is at ASTP, which is 25 degrees Celsius and 750-ish millimeters of mercury. That's just the unit I chose to use here. But at 25 degrees Celsius, water provides 23.8 millimeters of mercury of pressure on its own. So the pressure of the actual hydrogen you're collecting is less than 750. 750 millimeters of mercury is the total pressure, but you have to take away the contribution of water to that. This space in here is at 750, but 24 of it is just water. So 750.062 minus 23.8. I'm gonna have to do that on a calculator. 750.062 minus 23.8. I get 726.262. Significantly less than the total pressure that you might have thought hydrogen was providing there. And again, with the sig figs, we've got four sig or three decimal places here and one here. So we're going to have to round this to 720. 6.3 mmHg. If you're asked for like the number of moles of hydrogen that were produced, you're using this pressure, not 750. That is water plus hydrogen together. Another classic is being given the total pressure and the numbers of moles of each of the components. Now this one's perhaps a little bit tricky but what really matters is that it doesn't matter what the identity of each of these are. This in total is 20 moles. I got that by adding these together. One twentieth of the whole, one twentieth of all the molecules here are hydrogen. Three twentieths of all the molecules are ammonia. 10 twentieths or one half of all the molecules are carbon dioxide and six twentieths are nitrogen. If you're given the total pressure, you can calculate the pressure of the hydrogen gas knowing that it is one twentieth of the total pressure. 
This 1 20th, 3 20th, 10 20th, 6 20th are called the mole fractions of each of those. But again, each of those is the fraction of the contribution to the total pressure. So that means we have 40 tors of hydrogen. The pressure of ammonia is 3 20ths of 800, which means it was 120 tor. Um, the pressure of carbon dioxide is half of 800, which is 400 tor. And the pressure contributed by nitrogen would have been 6 20ths of 800, which is 240 tor. The reason I didn't just skip all that and wanted to actually do the calculation is that the sum of each of the partial pressures together when you add them up should be the total pressure. Dalton's law of partial pressure says the total pressure is the sum of the partial pressures of each component. Beautiful. I've got a challenge question up for the last bit. I want to know the total pressure of a mixture when 12 atmospheres of N2O4 decomposes into NO2. Let's do the chemical reaction for that first. N2O4 breaking apart to make NO2. To balance this, I need to note that I get two NO2s for every N2O4. Now, part A that I've rigged here is with a yield of 100%. So we are going to start out with 10 atmospheres of N2O4, but we are going to use up all of it so that there is none left. That's what it means to yield 100%, no reactant left. The NO2 starts out at zero, but we get two of them for every one of those that broke apart. That means we're going to gain 20 atmospheres of NO2. The total pressure here is the sum of these two, but actually there isn't any of that. The total pressure is 20 atmospheres. That should make sense because it's a one for two exchange of molecules and, uh, and the yield's 100%, so there's none of this left. If the yield was only 50%, we'd be starting with 10 of N2O4. Oh man, I used 10. Oh well, I'll just change that. And we're only going to use up half of it, 50% of it. So I'm going to take five away, and that leaves five atmospheres of N2O4. Of NO2, I'm starting with zero, and I'm going to gain two of these for every one of those that I use up. So if I use up five, I gain 10, double the amount because it's a one to two ratio. That gives me 10 ATMs, or atmospheres of NO2, which means that the total pressure here is 5 plus 10. Here's the law of partial pressures. The pressure in total for the mixture is the sum of the pressures of each. That gives me a total pressure of 15 ATMs. Love it. Dalton's law of partial pressure is insanely useful. The most common application that I see is this collecting gas over water but I included these other questions because I see teachers ask them all the time. Hey, thanks for being with me and best of luck.